Canada Conversations are a creation of IOM, made available under the Creative Commons 3.0 IGO. Please refer to the text of the audiobook for the copyright mark and the full legal code. Funded by Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada. Financé par Immigration, Refugees et Citoyenneté Canada. O Canada Conversations, Dialogue Number 12. Money and Costs in Canada. The following dialogue is related to Unit 8, Budgeting, from the Canadian Orientation Abroad Participant Workbook. For more information, refer to the following units of the Canadian Orientation Abroad Participant Workbook. 8.1. Money in Canada. 8.2. What are the basic living costs in Canada? 8.3. Your financial support. 8.4. How can you save some money? 8.5. Expectations related to financial support. 8.7. What do you need versus what do you want? In this dialogue, a Canadian Orientation Abroad facilitator discusses money in Canada, basic living costs, the financial support allowances offered, and ways to save money with participants. Obasi and Ali discuss their expectations about what they could buy in Canada. The Canadian Orientation Abroad facilitator, Ali, Sadia, Obasi, and other refugees are in the Canadian Orientation Abroad session room. A childminder takes Sadia's and Obasi's children to the childminding room until the session is over. The facilitator tells the attendees they can talk amongst themselves for a few minutes before the Canadian Orientation Abroad session begins. Hi, Obasi. How is everything? I am very good. My wife gave birth to our baby daughter. Is everyone healthy? There were some problems in the beginning, but my wife and baby are resting at home now. Please take good care of your family. I hope you and your family will be able to travel soon. What is today's session about? It is about money and budgeting. Today's session is important to me because I now have an additional family member. The Canadian Orientation Abroad facilitator starts the session. Welcome, everyone. Today, we are going to be talking about money. In Canada, the currency is the Canadian dollar. And for small amounts of money, they use the word cents. 100 cents equals one dollar. Here are some coins of different values. We will talk about each one. Each of these coins have a different size, shape, and value. There is a coin for 5 cents, 10 cents, 25 cents, plus a coin for $1 and a coin for $2. I will each give you a coin and you will describe it to the group. Here you go. Here you go. Okay, great. Let us talk about each of the coins. Who would like to describe what they see? I can. Okay, describe your coin to us. My coin is gold in color. It says one dollar. It has a face on one side and a scene on the other. Very good. The coin you are holding is a one dollar coin. Who do you think the person is on the coin? The monarch of Canada? Yes, it is. What about this coin? It is slightly bigger than the one dollar coin. Yes, you are holding a two dollar coin. And it has a gold colored circle in the center with silver along the edges. What about paper money? In Canada, there are $5 bills, $10 bills, $20 bills, $50 bills, and $100 bills. All printed banknotes have one size, but they are different colors based on their value. Look, 
as it may have been in other places you have lived, managing money will be a big part of settling into Canada. You will need to learn about expenses, budgeting, how to access your money, and how to save money in Canada. I have a lot of questions about money. Great. How about we start with budget and expenses? Sounds good. When you first go to Canada, the cost of your travel will be covered by an immigration loan. I see. You will start paying it back one year after your arrival in Canada. You will do this by paying a small amount every month. How much will I need to pay each month? You will get a written statement from the Government of Canada with the total amount you owe and the monthly amount you will need to pay. What if I do not have enough money after making monthly payments to repay the loan? If you have difficulties repaying the loan, you must inform the Government of Canada. Arrangements can be made to reduce the amount of your monthly payments if required. There is also the financial support that you can get, either from the government or from your sponsors. You mean like money to pay for food and housing? Yes, correct. The financial support is the money that you will get every month to cover your family's basic living costs while you get settled in. It will also help with other basic expenses, like electricity, gas, transportation, phone, internet, and other essential items. How much money will I get each month? The amount that you receive in financial support will be different for each family. It will depend on many things, like where you live in Canada, and your family's needs. How does where I live in Canada change how much money I might get? Well, in Canada, the cost of living varies between big cities and rural areas. It might also depend on the neighborhood in which you live. And I guess because families can be so different, the amount of money is different. Exactly. The amount of money you get will depend on factors like family size, the age of family members, and your family's needs. Based on individual circumstances, you may receive additional allowances. These may include allowances for families with a newborn, for people over 65 years old, for people with specific dietary needs, or to help pay for housing. Ah, I see. I have to take care of my mother-in-law. Where can we find out about this extra support? Does anyone know the answer to this question? We can ask our government-funded organization or sponsors about it. That is correct. Let us move on to the budget and what you will be spending your financial support on. Your largest expense every month will be your housing. You will have to pay for things like rent and utilities. What are utilities? Utilities include electricity, heating, and water. Some of these costs may be included in your rent. Your bills for electricity and heating will be higher in the winter. Why is that? Well, in Canada, it can get very hot and very cold. In some places, it can go above 30 degrees Celsius in the summer and below minus 20 degrees in the winter. How much heating you use will depend on how cold it is outside. That makes sense. I am used to warmer weather. Where I have lived, it hardly ever gets colder than 5 degrees Celsius.
we would just wear a few extra layers of clothes. Yes, same for us. Does anyone know what the next biggest expense would be? Food? Correct. Your next largest expense will be food. There is also the cost of a phone and internet connection. Yes, I wondered how I could talk to my family back home. You can use the internet to make low-cost, long-distance calls or buy calling cards to call people in other countries. How do we get internet access in Canada? You can buy internet access for a smartphone through a data package or have internet installed in your home. But if you want to save money on internet access, you can also use free internet at libraries and other public places. What about regular calling? Can I call family instead? You can call them directly, but keep this in mind. Long distance calls can be very expensive. Carefully check rates before calling internationally. You can also use the internet to make low cost long distance calls or you can buy calling cards. Is calling expensive within Canada too? It can be expensive, yes. To cut down on costs for internet, cell phone or landline telephone, you can choose to have either a cell phone or a landline telephone instead of both. How will we know if we are getting a good deal? You can compare the terms and conditions before choosing a contract or a payment plan for a cell phone, cable television, internet, furniture, or a car. You can even search for discounts available. And what about other expenses, like clothing, personal care products, supplies, and other essential items? When shopping for things, you can also look for stores and products with the lowest prices and check store flyers for good deals. What about a car? My family was wondering if we could buy a car. Well, you should know that the amount of financial support you will get is limited. It is only enough to cover your basic needs like food, housing, and transportation. Once you get settled, and if you earn an income, you can start saving up to buy a car. The financial support is meant to cover basic expenses. So even for things like housing, you will have to be careful to make sure your money lasts for the whole month. Do you have an example of how I can do this? Well, for example, if you are on your own, you can share a house or an apartment with someone and pay part of the rent. That is true. You can look for housing with utilities included in the cost of the rent. This is a fixed cost that could help you with budgeting. Otherwise, the cost of utilities will vary based on personal use. This is useful to know. Yes, it is important to have realistic expectations about what you will be able to do with the money you receive. This will help you adjust to life in Canada. I see. And if I do not have enough money to make it to the end of the month, what can I do? If you use all the money before the end of the month, you will not receive more. You should speak to your government-funded organization or sponsors about how to manage your expenses. Do you have any other tips to help us budget? For food, you can buy fresh food and make meals at home instead of eating in restaurants. And Public transportation is the least expensive option for traveling.
You can save by buying a monthly pass. Yes, of course. And for child care, you can ask your government-funded organization or sponsors if low-cost child care is available. Or you can share child raising duties with other parents. Thank you. This is helpful. My wife and I wondered how we would manage when both of us work and our children are still young. I do not have children, but this is still helpful to know. I did not think about the subway or bus suggestion. That is a good idea. Thanks. No problem. Your government-funded organization or sponsors can show you where to buy food and provide tips on how to find good prices. I do have a few questions about the financial support we receive, though. Sure, go ahead. After I am in Canada, I want to send some money to my family back home. I promised them that when I get to Canada, I would send some money back to them. That may be difficult to do in the beginning, as you probably do not have enough money to send to family members back home. Because the financial support you get is only enough to cover basic expenses for you and your family who are with you in Canada. I see. You said my largest expense would be housing, right? Yes, housing in Canada is expensive. That is why most of your financial support will be used to pay your rent. Your family may need to use other benefits to cover the cost of other basic needs. I will learn English or French as soon as I can, so I can find a job right away. That is a good idea. Once you find a job and get settled in, you could have more money, including some to send to your family back home. So, if we want to do things like travel outside Canada or send our children to university, we would have to save money or get a loan. My son is of high school age now, and he is thinking about going to university. You are correct. Long-term goals like those are expensive, and most people need to save and or get a loan. Maybe your son can apply for student grants and scholarships to help pay for university tuition. For travel, you can plan in advance and save. I suggest you write out a list of some long-term goals, and that way you plan ahead. What are some of your long-term goals? I would like to buy a home and a car someday and save for my children's education. I want to be able to buy expensive branded shoes. I want to work out at the gym and eat at restaurants. I had a high standard of living in my country, you know? I used to have these things, but not anymore. I understand. It will likely not be possible to do those things while you are receiving financial support. It is important to identify what your needs versus your wants are. I guess that makes sense. Like I am doing now, I am focusing on what I need. Then, once I am more settled and I find a job, I can look into getting things that I want. For now, I will focus on getting settled in Canada. One day, perhaps, when we have jobs, we can save up for these things. But in the beginning, we will need to live simply. End of Dialogue Unit